uh, Andrew Pfizer for invitation. <coughs> and actually, we have known each other for a long time. And but until this year, we have some cooperation. <laughs> so even he worked in our institute for two years. <laughs> But I'm very happy with the result. But today I'm not going to talk about the, 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 the result. I want to talk about something uh, more general. So uh, this is about ABC theorems and Bush's problem over function fields. So um, later I will explain to you what is Bush's problem. Uh, it, it really originally came from some logical question. And then this ABC theorem is really a, from ABC conjecture of uh, number field. So let's see. So what is ABC conjecture? So suppose that you have integer A, B, C positive co-prime. <coughs> and uh, the ABC conjecture basically tell you that this is the largest number will be bounded by this some, some constant depend on epsilon. And, and this P will be the radical of ABC. So it means for prime, which divide ABC, you count only once plus an epsilon. Okay. And this ABC conjecture is very famous. You will see um, there are many implications. And the first implication I'll show you now is uh, this ABC conjecture imply uh, asymptotic for mass zero. Of course, now this is nothing because uh, this is Wales result. But, uh, but let me just uh, give you uh, this a proof of asymptotic for mass zero so to show you how to apply this type of theorem. And then later I will show you in the function field case why it is better. Okay, so so let's just think about this a n plus b n equal to c n, and this a b c are positive integers. Okay, and then we want to say when n is large enough, there is no solution. Okay, so so. So this, this is a very easy application of this ABC conjecture. So this ABC conjecture would imply, so since they are all positive, so I have this CN would be less or equal than, so given some epsilon. So maybe we can just take a epsilon to be one half or something, anything specific. Okay, so now this conjecture would tell you you can find some constant depend on this epsilon. And then this, there is a product of P. And supposedly I should take A N, B N, C N, but it, because I only take, take one to the epsilon. So here I can write A, B, C and uh, one, sorry, P. So you see the flavor is uh, this control the exponent. So you, you are not allowed to have too many primes, the prime exponent. Okay, so how does this tell us? So this will be C epsilon, and then, uh, so you will have this, uh, so we have, this will be A, B, C times one plus epsilon. Okay, and this will be C epsilon, and you have this C three plus three epsilon. Okay, then you you divide this into here, so you get a three epsilon would be is this or equal than C epsilon, right? And then you know this is impossible if n is too big. Okay, so anyway, so you get n is this or equal than three plus three epsilon plus Log. So if this tell you this equation has no solution if n is bigger than this number. So this is what we say asymptotic Fermat. Okay, let me write the theorem. That's okay. Okay. 
So this is uh, one easy application of this ABC conjecture. And in, det in literature, there are more. So uh, recently, there's ABC imply Rose theorem. And you know Ross theorem tell you this uh, algebraic function cannot be approximated. Yes, so but this is totally non-effective. No. Because it, so for number of years, it's not. So if you have effective ABC, then it's effective. So anyway, anything is a conjecture. Then I'll show you function for your case. It's effective. So in literature, ABC conjecture implies those. And you know Rose is one of the most important things in diventing approximation. It has many applications, and it tells you uh, algebraic number cannot be approximated by rational number too good. OK. And then ABC conjecture also implies model theorem, model conjecture, which is now Fortin's theorem, which is tell you curve of a genus two, uh, greater or equal than two has uh, only finitely many integral points or rational points. Okay, so, uh, and there are more. So, okay, so in literature, ABC conjecture is uh, something very important and uh, you could have a conference on that for, for five days, I think. Okay, so, uh, so you see the flavor of this ABC conjecture. But now I want to move to the function field case. So in the function field case, the, the first easy example, e easy case is a polynomial case. So, so su oops, sorry. So suppose you have polynomials, and let's say over C, and it's a relative prime, and satisfy this e equation. And then we have a similar statement. Uh, now here we count the degree of polynomial, okay? And then it would be smaller than counting the number of distinct roots of A, B, C over C and minus one. So you see the difference here. In this A, B, C conjecture, this is C epsilon. It's like uh, Andrew just asked. This C, C epsilon is, is not actually not, control, not controllable. And, but here, this, con this is not, sorry, this is not just a constant, it's even a negative. So it's like a, this, this number is less than one here, Take, and this is a logarithmic form. Okay, so this is not just effective, it means it, it's reasonable, it's quite good. Okay, so let's see how this can do with this case. So let's do the same thing here. So in this case, I have polynomials, right? And uh, now let's apply this case. So let's, let's just say C is the maximum degree. So <coughs> anyway, okay. So in this, then, then we, we will have this uh, N times degree C, right? And it would be less or equal than N0, A, B, C, minus one. Same reason, because we only count zero once. But this would tell us this would be smaller than, <laughs> this would be degree A plus degree B plus degree C minus one. So this would be less or equal than three times degree C minus one. Right, and this will tell us uh, it's n minus three degree C is less or equal than negative one, and because degree C is we are con we we are considering non non constant, so C is at least one, so we have n minus three, and so we could, and so n is has to be smaller than two, okay. So this would easily tell you, okay, if n bigger or equal than three, that would not be correct. But people know the algebraic geometry would tell me, well, well, that's nonsense because you know if you have a curve that's a, that's a curve uh, genus 
at least the one if an equator equal to three. So that's impossible. I know, but this is just an example, just to show you how to apply this type of theorem. Okay. So as you can see here, from function field, from the difference between number field and function field is for function field, everything you can do explicitly, and so you have control. So for number field case, let's see uh, ABC conjecture in prior rows, but uh, we know Rose theorem is proved, and but we also know Rose theorem has no effective version. Okay, so uh, starting from my thesis, my my dream is to to make uh, this diaventin problem effective for function field. Okay, and this is the starting point. Okay. So now let me give you some uh, introduction in literature, how to develop. So I will do it more generally. So let's just say we have an algebraic closed field, okay, there is a P, could be positive. And then the function field means it's a function field of, an, of some curve. And, but in literature, we can do more generally. We can do it for normal varieties. But here, let me just stick to curve. And then it, today we I just stick to a function field of curves. So why function fields? So if you think about function fields, function field has you are take, talking about valuations like here, and those valuations like in number field you have primes, you have you you can do valuations, and you have product formula for function field. You know sum of zero equal to sum of pole. So let's product formula, and but what's, what's even better for function field is you have a derivative. So for number field, the problem we cannot solve for ABC because we don't know what is a derivative. It's in no way you can have it. And so, so for function field, you have this uh, derivative. So you, and on the other side, we know Nevanina theory is to discuss the value distribution of analytic functions or entire function, meromorphic functions. And for that, they, that's developed and there are many techniques that we can use for function field. And, and my, my advisor actually is a complex analysis. So the, the whole program is to, to try to, to use technique from Nevalina theory and then to prove algebraic result or diverting result for function field and it worked. Okay, so let's look at this uh, ABC theorem. So in Stoller, he is the first uh, to, to do this uh, polynomial case. And then for Mason, he does uh, A plus B equal to C for any characteristic uh, and actually for also for curves. And later, uh, Forlach, uh, Brown and Will Mason, they do it uh, for, this is we call diagonal equation. Okay, so more equa more variable, and then in my thesis, I I extend the Volach method to ex uh, further to do this is a truncated second man theorem. Later <coughs> I I will show you what does that means. So basically, so over here you have this uh, when you have a plus b equal to c. And we look over P, we think this is a P1 case. So this corresponds to, to this line. So this is taken in this line. And this A plus B is taken as X0 plus X1. So over there, Xn plus 1 would be our X2 here. So. And so in other words, for this A plus B plus C, we are consider three lines. Okay, three, three lines, and but uh, for in general you can consider more lines, and for P n you can consider not just diagonal lines. You can consider uh, all, all there are many, many, many hyperplanes in P n. Okay, and then Noguchi, uh, he does this function field case of a higher dimensional variety in characteristic zero in the language of Nevanina theory. And later we, we try to carry out a positive characteristic function case. 
And then there's one big breakthrough. And I think that <laughs> this I should mention, this is uh, for people that drink a lot of, this is more or less the ABC conjecture for function field. The truly ABC conjecture. So this is for moving target. So what do we mean moving target? So in here, I am, so over here we are consider equations or the hyperplanes like this, or we have this sum AI XI equal to zero. And this AI are constant. Okay, and, and for that, uh, there, there are something to you can carry on. But then for this Yamanoi's result is AI are non-constant. So they are meromorphic functions, or, or in this case, they are algebraic functions. Okay, and, uh, but it, he can only do one dimension because it's already very hard for, it's, uh, it's uh, not expected to prove so early. <laughs> so this is a breaking through result. Okay, and uh, so let me let me try to state uh, some some case of this second man theorem. So you can so if so this case the function field of a curve. But if you don't don't you don't like, you can think about they are rational functions. So polynomial over polynomial, and your curve are just p one. Okay. <coughs> and so, so for each point in the curve, you have a local parameter. Like uh, over C, every point, uh, you have a local para parameter Z minus A, right? And then you can take a valuation. Then for Riemann service, we know uh, the n number of zero equal to number of pole for this for algebra curve, same. And then how do you define height? So the height will be the number of poles. So it's Actually, it's the degree of, if you have a polynomial case, it's a degree of f, because pole is infinity, right? And, <coughs> and then th this is, uh, so if you want to work for projective uh, higher dimension, we will write uh, this version. And then this is the same, you are taking the minimum, okay? So if you, so, so in this case, you, you would be like f0 and f and the 1 and you are counting the minima poles, and this is the projective version. And in, the, in this setting, we always choose finite set of point S. Okay, so what is the truncated second man theorem? So, uh, so now you have elements of function field, and suppose you, you need to have some conditions. Suppose they are linearly independent. And because I'm thinking about positive characteristic as well. So I will write k to the kp. But if it's, a, because k is a cat algebraic closed, so, so actually when p equal to zero, so it's just a constant k. Okay, and if it's a p is a positive, it means it's, it's k to the p's power. Okay, and so suppose we now have linear form in, in n plus one variable. So they define hyperplane on projective space. And they are in general position. So means if you take out you know, n plus one of them, they are linearly independent. So they are determinant, it's not zero. Okay, and then this theorem basically tell you, so this, this you can think of in this case is the maximum degree. And then you have q minus n minus one. So in this case, you have, you, you have three, three hyperplane, right? and n is one, so you have a three minus one minus one, so you have one there. And then, because we are taking projectively, so I need to, to, to multiply, so it can be projective invariant. Otherwise, you can think of, you can ignore this, if it's a, like this relative prime case, it's, a, it's really just taking the valuation of, of this ABC, okay. And, and when this is P1 case, so you do the truncation to one. But when you have higher dimension, you, can, you have to truncate to n. So here you only count once, but when you are doing for Pn, then you need, to, need, need the n. But the good news here is always you get this number. Okay, and this number is good, it's explicit. 
And for example, when g equal to zero, and you, if you take s equal to one, this is actually a negative. So you get something better sometime. Okay, so this is the truncated second main theorem. And there are many, many applications of this theorem. Okay, and then, so let's look back a little bit. So, so in here, we are assuming this function to be linearly independent. But uh, in the Malina theory, Katang ask further. So if they are not linearly independent, so suppose they, they generate a di smaller dimension, then can you say something? Do you have any kind of estimate? Okay, and <coughs> this was done in the Vanilla theory, and we can co carry over to here. So this this tells us um, here. So over there is a, so now we okay. This only work for catalyst zero. For case P it doesn't work, and so suppose we have this x zero to x n. They have algebraic functions, and uh, so they so they. You think of this, you think of this as a map into projective space, and the image is d-dimensional subspace. So you can think about the dimension of x zero to x n is d plus one, and so projectively it's d. So now you you avoid uh, this linearly independent relation. For if it's in linearly independent, this will be n. Okay, and. So so now we again we have linear forms and in general position. So in here this height will be the the thing we just state. And uh so up there we have q minus n, but here we need to sacrifice. So we have q minus two n plus d minus one. But the good news is over there we truncated to n, but here we can truncate it to smaller d. And I did it in my thesis. I never use it, but this time uh, I, I I apply this to solve this Bush's problem. So I'm actually quite happy about it. Okay, so so don't this when you can do smaller, there are some good good stuff can came out. Later I will explain to you. Okay, so this is the story about ABC theorem for function field. Okay. So okay. So next I'm going to move on to this Bush's theorem uh, for moving target. Sorry, I, I did it moving target. So this is this comes so the Bush's problem for positive characteristic comes from a joint work with uh, Hector Peston. And I just invited him to our institute. I realized he's only 25. <laughs> now he has two PhD. <laughs> he just graduated from Queens and moving to Harvard University. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so when working with him, I actually never not met him before. So. Once, once I wonder if Hector Peston really exists, <laughs> because he is a student, so I could not find him on internet. But uh, now I know he does exist. So, so it's all this Bush's problem started with Hilbert's tense problem, it's, and uh, so Hilbert's tense problem asks uh, if you can find uh, some algorithm to determine and. Uh, any polynomial with in several variables. If you over z, you have solutions, and uh, this is this problem was solved by Matiyasovich in seventy. The answer is no. What does it mean by no? Means you cannot find the algorithm. So, uh, is there a specific type of algorithm that you are talking about? No, just just find uh, some some one. Any general algorithm you can say give you some equation. Tell me if. We so how how did uh, how did we prove that? <laughs> Don't ask me. I'm not logician. Logic. 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 Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll use it to something like yeah, you can oh, you. There are three more. Three more? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> you guys must know better than me on logic. So um, actually, when working with uh, Paston, I know, I think he's a logician. He, made, he did a lot of logic problem. So I, so we have an agreement. If you, we work together, we only write number theory paper, no logic. <laughs> because I won't be able to understand. But by the time we finish, he was too excited. He said, I must write us a few pages. <laughs> so later, when it came to logical question, don't ask me again. <laughs> so, oh, I went on camera. <laughs> OK, but uh, I'm sorry that, that I, I cannot answer that. OK, so uh, later, can Bushi asks some further questions. So that suppose we don't just ask for general polynomials. We ask more specific polynomial, say quadric. OK, this is diagonal quadric equation. And then Bushi asks, so can you have some algorithm for that to determine? Then again, so, so he said if, if you if you know this solution is not, if you know there is no, no <coughs> solutions, then you will imply Matayashi's result. Because then this polynomial cannot be solved by algorithm. OK. <coughs> and, but, <coughs> but then Bush is also make one conjecture. So this problem will be, this Bush is a problem we, the logical problem we related to this Daventin problem. So there is a square problem. So it says if you have uh, integers, many, many integers, OK, so the, there is uh, some m, such that uh, their second difference, so this means their second difference always equal to 1. So, OK. So, and if, if in that, that case happens, then this, the, you know, there must be difference in this way. OK, this is Bush's square problem. OK, so what's the link uh, to this uh, tense problem? <coughs> so, <coughs> so if you, you know, uh, we already know Hilbert tense problem was no. And then suppose we know this problem is correct, then we know Bush's question is correct. And we already know Bush's problem implied Hilbert tense problem is no. Right. And so this is uh, how to go back. OK, so to go back, you need uh, this diventing problem. OK, and this problem is in still a conjecture. OK, and the first result, uh, conditional result, is proved by Foyta. OK, so Foyta shows Bush's problem. If you have sufficient many solutions, it would be correct. And, but you need to make a conjecture on Bombieri then. And th this Bombieri then conjecture says uh, if you have a service of general type, the rational points must degenerate. OK. So it, based on this conjecture, then he can show it, tr it is true. OK, the Bush is a square problem. So what is it, the rational points? So if you have a generate or without dense? They, are, they, they must stay, they may degenerate. Into so they must stay in a curve or something. Oh, or lower dimension. Or they yeah, they cannot be dense. Yeah, yeah. They, they cannot be the arithmetical dense. Okay. So, in his paper, he actually also proved the function field case, and he, he his bound is very good. He can prove to this bound, and he can also prove for meromorphic function case. Okay. And, but the, unfortunately, his method cannot go beyond square. So, and I should also mention that later, Peston also proved this problem by assuming uh, ABC conjecture. Okay. And then let me mention some results about this Bushy square problem. So, so actually, PDS and Fidox they are logician. 
definitely logician. And they, they, they prove this rational functions. This is square problems for rational functions. Okay, and they also prove a positive, but need, they need to assume P is very big. Okay. And then this Splapentos and uh, Fitos, this is difficult. It's a woman. It's a woman, I think, yeah. Again, logician. <laughs> <laughs> they prove function field of uh, logic characteristic. Okay, so this Bush's problem can be reformulated a little bit. So we had, at the first, we are six uh, looking at the second difference, but you can look in at uh, as a polynomial. Uh, so if you have a degree two polynomial with the coefficient in integer, and you know you plug in some numbers one to n, then they are integer squares. And if that happen, then they can this polynomial must be square. Okay. So it people believe. Uh, Bush's problem should work uh, for m equal to two, 5. And well, 4 is not correct uh, because they are counterexample. So you plug in, they are integer squares. Okay. So what next? So next question is, so we go from square to general n. So suppose now n is uh, any positive integer. And we have, so it's here I mean bigger n, okay. And these are n's power. Then we have n's difference. And so suppose, so for square problem, we have second difference to equal to two. And here is n's difference equal to n factorial. And is it necessary they are something like this? Okay, so second difference is, so here I'm just trying to explain what is the second difference, i's difference. Okay, so third difference means you minus three times. Okay, but uh, so this is not so easy to describe. So equivalent form, it would be this. So suppose you have an, an integer uh, and you want to see if you have this integer and, and given, <coughs> a, this is a given, AI is given. <coughs> and then you give M from one to capital M. And suppose this this value becomes n power. So can you say actually this a, AI has to be zero? So means again they are some polynomial power. They are they are a n power thing polynomial. Okay. And let me just make one remark. So before this n n's power problem was proved, there is one step, but it's called Hensley problem. So this is a Hensley problem. So if at the beginning, I already assume this, you don't have this term. So these are given to be zero. So you have only this term and a zero. And they are n's power. And can you say something? And that's Hensley's n's power problem. So this also happened in the literature of in the way to to do logic. Okay, so let's make a so there is another equivalent form. So but this is over Q because when you take in differences, some rational come up. So again, now we have a polynomial in Q X, and then we have this f one to f m. They are n's power, rational numbers. And can you say this polynomial must be this form? Okay. Okay, and for this n's power problem, again, uh, they prove for n, n equal to three, polynomial ring, zero characteristic. And uh, so before, before I came in actually, all these results done by logician. And I, the first time I start to work on this problem is to review uh, Hector's paper, Peston's paper. And I was wondering why this logician are working on these things. And I was wondering, they are doing, they are, they are do, the technique they use is Nevalina theory. But 
they did not use the theorem to prove it. Every proof they reproduced the, pr the Nibbana theorem technique again. <laughs> so, so I couldn't help to try to to work on this one. So later, um, I start to working on this Hensley problem, and uh, and I skip the part. So, so most recently, uh, we prove the nth power problem for function field, meromorphic function, and non commuting meromorphic functions, zero characteristic. Okay. And uh, then I mentioned before, Hector Peston, he assumed ABC conjecture to show the number field case. And then he also proved the function field case. Okay. And that's how we begin uh, email each other. And then we discuss over internet and later, we find it's possible to do something more. So, okay. So let me just state a little bit uh, this result. So for constant case, what can we prove here? So this is a function field and characteristic zero, genus G. And then we say if this, if there are too many integers, such that uh, you have a polynomial degree n, and you put in plug in this number, and if it's an nth power, then that's not impossible. F must be an nth power itself. Okay. Bi are constants. So in number field, we plug in one, two, three, four, right? In function field, we just say you plug in some constant. So yeah, you can plug in one, two, three. It's okay. Is there a specific choice of B? No, no, no. Anyone would be fine. And distinct. And distinct. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And so this basically tell you for function field, you know, as, as long as M is big. So what happens if you go back to the, to the, to the numbers and you say I just plug it in, you have a couple of integers? Not necessarily one, two, three. <laughs> because there are no results, so I don't know. <laughs> now no, it's a. Is there a conjecture? It's a con no, 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 no. Or is it obviously uh, possible that you can get lots of squares? Right, if you get lots of squares, I think it's. It should be a similar conjecture. Right, right. I think it. Yeah. You probably can say some conjecture and say this implies Bush's problem. <laughs> or they are equivalent. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me describe a little bit. This is the, the, what we prove with N and Huang. Uh, that's three female. <laughs> okay, so uh, they both are, N was formerly my postdoctor, now she was in Vietnam. She is in Vietnam, and Huang is my postdoc now. Okay, so the idea is like this. So I try to use this Katang theorem to prove it. So I just give you some idea how this is done. So, so suppose we start with a polynomial, okay? And remember, they are not. That's not constant. Not all co coefficients are constant, and then bi are constant. So we plug in, okay? So now we are we set a linear form. Remember, bi are constant, so I, I take bi, and the, the, here I write xn, bi n minus 1, xn minus 1. So li, this will be a linear form in constant coefficient. And then, because they are distinct, okay, so li, you know this Fender Mode matrix, so if you take n plus 1 of them, the, in, the determinant is not zero. So they are in general position. So we are in good shape of using the Katanz theorem or truncated segment theorem. And uh, next, so remember we need to plug in points. So what is our points here? So the thing remains here is this one, a minus one. So those things are not, some of them are not constant. So we have a morphism from C to Pn. Okay, so there is uh, some technical part here. So we w so uh, so you, there are some technical part we have to show first. Uh, this phi is uh, degenerate, linearly degenerate. If you have too many m, and then so why do I need this? So think about this polynomial. So um, when you plug in, we know it's an nth power, right? But if I want to use a truncated second man theorem, remember I can truncate to n. 
that's not good, right? Because when you truncate to n, and it, you know it's n power, that's not no use. But if I can prove it degenerate, then this Cartan theorem tell you you can truncate to d, and one part is n power, and one part is truncated to d. So you get something. So it's like here. This part is n, and this part you truncate to one. Then you can play around. Now this part to n, this part to to n minus one, for example. Then you can play something. So <coughs> so our idea is to uh, to show first uh, you need uh, some messy algebraic argument to show it, it really degenerate, and then we use truncate Cartan's theorem to treat the degenerate case. And the good news is the truncated order is smaller. And one side you have n's power. So you can play this type of game. Okay. So so happily we solve it. And so happily while we doing we work on this problem, both of my post doctor they have babies. <laughs> so so that's a happy paper. So then now let me move to what is the idea uh, we can do for in Peston and my pap my work. Okay, so we we do it differently. So in in uh, in N and uh, Huang, our joint paper, we put the, we we move into hyperplanes, and so everything we we move to higher dimension, but then we stay in same function field. But with uh, Hector and with Peston's paper, we actually we do factorization for polynomials. So we we factor polynomials, but this is a polynomial over function field, right? But their root will not stay in the same function field, right? Because you have irreducible polynomial, then and their coefficient are functions, then their solution would be. Go, you have to go up to, to some different function field. And then the technique might be more, so you might need some ba more background to do field extension. But the good news is the valuation is easier, and the, all the calculation is easier. And another good news is, in this case, we, we, we can not just plug in bi to be constant, we can plug in P, bi to be moved to be functions, because we have this Yamanoi's result, so for truncation, and so somehow this method is stronger. Although technically, uh, I mean, you need to use more language, but it's not so bad. Okay. So, uh, so let me just stick to this constant case first. So suppose, suppose this function, they have no multiple zeros to, and this alpha are zeros of f, okay. And so suppose we plug in bi to be constant and becomes u to the n. Okay, so what does this tell us? So alpha is a zero, alpha is a zero of f, and so this will be zero. So I take this difference. And then you can factor out this alpha minus bi, right? And so t thinking about this fx minus f alpha. And then you have a g alpha, okay. <coughs> and uh, so, but, but we know this alpha no longer diff in k, it diff in something upstairs. So we need to take a field extension. Okay, and this, let's say this is the curve corresponding to this function field. Okay, and uh, so, uh, so the thing is, uh, we, we can, so we can move out, uh, there are only finite many point uh, such that, uh, so we move out some finite many point. Uh, so when this, when this thing has zeros, Okay, that when this thing has zeros, this part would not have zeros. So the valuation would be zero. And so in other words, this tells us this would be the nth power, and if I take out some finite menu value, and if this is positive, then it has to be nth power. 
Okay, because here we would not take any value at the point. So this would be, so we think about <coughs> the order at that point that would be nth power. So in other words, you have very high, rem high multiplicity at that point. So, <coughs> so, so what does this tell us? So when doing truncated segment theorem, we actually only need to count tr truncated to one. And so in here, we can take one over n, because we know it's an nth power. OK. So, so now, the good news is uh, then we, we can play this, uh, this type of game, because, because, because we, we have exactly this type of form. OK, so then, and the another good news is uh, to, so here I'm just staying bi are constant. But it, because when I, you, when I do this type of things, I'm stay, staying when uh, in an equal, staying in P1 case. So that's the case we have Yamanoi is breaking through result. So suppose I want to say bi are not just constant. Then that's fine. I can I the place I need to apply segment theorem, I can use Yamanoi's. And so this method can work for BI also BIR functions. Okay. So this is actually the starting point we want I am discussing with Hector. And that's the starting point of our joint paper. But uh but unfortunately, at the end, the reverie think our paper is too long, so he cut out this part. <laughs> and so later, we only leave the positive characteristic case. So, so this is the thing I just mentioned. So the idea is just behind the idea is just that. Okay. So so here is just the notation to apply the theorem. So let me j go just very quickly. So this is a fixed. Uh, so alpha is the zero of the polynomial. So you do field extension. And so all these are technical results tell you when you do field extension, how the valuation changes. And the height uh, goes this. OK, so because you, you need to go to field extension, so we will do function, we will do truncated segment theory over L. So when you do, when you go to upstairs, then they are also truncated the second mention with a bounded degree. Okay, so in, fa in, fa in number of your case, this is exactly the first in the theorem. So where when you, for rows, you are approaching rational function by ration, uh, algebraic function by rational. But you can also think about approach algebraic function by algebraic number by algebraic number but bounded degree. This is also important problem in diaventing approximation. And this is the function field case. And uh, so in here, so this actually tell us, so suppose now you are, you, you want to, this, this, this is more general. So, so we, are, we want this alpha to be bigger, right? So, and in this case, bi is still constant. And in this case, you, you will sacrifice this two into two m, and m is the di the in dimension of L over k, so it's the degree of alpha. Okay, so this this is very easy to show, and uh, this is actually the first in theorem, but with the constant one side is constant. Okay, and so in. So this is so that's how we have we took we prove it. And again, sorry, this is also truncated. So it means you only count once, okay. And then for the Nevalina for the how to say for the moving target case, this is Yamanoi's result. So uh, I just demonstrate for for respect. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, okay. So this is, uh, this is again, uh, this is an important result. So you, you have this, you have F and this AI are moving. Okay, and uh, so, so th sorry, this is a moving case. So for truncated, we have AI are constant, but here AI are functions. And 
Yamano improve, you can do truncation. So this is a milestone for Nevanina theory. Okay, so let me let's just go quickly. So uh, the next thing we want to do is actually uh, the, the point is what happened to positive characteristic. So for positive characteristic, uh, they are counterexamples. So people used to think it's not true. Okay, and let me show you the counterexample. So first, uh, so suppose you have fx equal to xa minus times x minus a to the pr, right? And so suppose you want to plug in 1 to n. And let's assume characteristic is big. So you have, so I plug in fm, it will be m minus a, m minus a to the pr. But because, because m is smaller, so you know n to the p equal to m. Right, so m to the pr equal to m to the pr. So this will become m minus a to the pr. So you have this, okay. And so, and let's say p is uh, positive, p is greater, because p has to be bigger, so it, it's not true. So I can make this into a square, okay. And, and m is different because p. So this case tells us you would have many, many such m if p is sufficiently large. And they are square, and you cannot say anything about it. Okay. And how about general case? They are also counterexample. Okay. So for general case, we also assume this, and then we have a polynomial x minus a times this thing again. Phi n is the order number. So again, we this. Because this uh, p, this r phi n will be congruent one mod p, so mod m. So, uh, so anyway, so this would become again. You can take out this because x can be one m can be written as m to the p. So m would be m can be written as m to the p to the any p p p's power. Okay. So again, this will be become n's power because this r to the phi n will be congruent one mod n. Okay, so again, there will be some n's power there. So, I'm a little bit confused. so uh, yeah. For, uh, isn't the conjecture states that for a given uh, field, there exists sufficiently large n such right. that there, uh, uh, it has to be some power of the right. polynomial, but then, this give uh, this gives you uh, a counterexample for specific m, but can it happen that when m gets larger and larger, then uh, the conjecture? Is so we 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 also say if p is sufficiently large. Uh, so that means uh, this counterexample is. So uh, actually, that, uh, so the thing you want is actually you you want to have something. This x to the pr's power has has enough solution, yeah. So if I'm over, over an algebraic cross field, you always find a lot of solution. I think this is just a counterexample for the existence of a global n, but n can be changed uh, depending on p, isn't it? <sighs> I mean, I mean, when you're on characteristic zero, you get an m which depends on the genus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're on characteristic p, this will not always hold. You also have to be careful with the characteristic yeah. that goes in. Yeah. Yeah. So. So anyway, so this looks like a counterexample, but actually, uh, when we join the paper, I real. I realize this is the only counterexample, only type of counterexample. So I, the thing I try to do is to, to say, maybe if we exclude something like this, then everything is okay. So it turns out it's fine. So and then, then Hector make it into a theory. So we, so this this polynomial, so. This one, this polynomial and this polynomial, actually they are not so bad. If you think of this one, it's a transform from here. 
right? If you take out this PR, right? And if you think about this polynomial, again, it's not so, there are some relation between these two factors. So um, we say, we, next we say they are n pseudo power. So what does that mean? I'm running out of time, let me go fast. So, uh, so uh, in here, it's, so for, for the example we just see, so uh, actually, I, this is a polynomial. So if I deform it by raising power into the coefficient, so that's like a, the, the, the one we raise a to the eight piece, piece power, then, uh, then they, you, we can collect all these things together. So, and so if, if, if they came from the same type, then we collect them as a tuple and we multiply them together. Okay, and uh, so for example, we, for this one, we write this as one and uh, PR, okay. And so look, the important thing is, so over there, the only thing we, we really need is, so uh, we take, take the function and it really becomes, so it, it really becomes this, so this is the, this is the thing we just, just over there. Right, so uh, so we have this f m equal to m minus f m minus f p r. So this is this is the other side, and then what do we want to say is this is actually m equal to m minus f and to the p r plus one. So this is the dense. This part is the dense of. So that's what we exactly want here. Okay. So, so as you see, this is why lab that's not true, and here we nail down it. And so we we make this Frobenius factorization for any any polynomial. We just make this factorization. So this GI will be irreducible polynomial distinct, and WI will be some vectors. Okay. And then P will be the constant part, okay. And then we basically say, uh, so uh, we 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 can have this type of factorization, okay. And next, and what do we mean? It's n pseudo power. So if we have that kind of factorization, and then this this length of of each factor, this, this, of this, uh, they, they, they are coordinates, right? They are tuples, and the length of the tuple is divisible by u. So for example, the length of this one is pr plus one, and in this case, it's divisible by two, okay? And this will be two pseudo power, okay? And so in, in this case, we know if it's a, this polynomial is uses pseudo power, then the you take in value, they are, they are use, they are use power, and so that's what that's what we have to to do. Okay, so result in positive characteristic. So we have a theorem tell us. <coughs> so, uh, so we want to nail down when this is uh, we have p and we have m. Okay, and if this this m. So we have a p and uh, this is case p, and then we have some sequence. And suppose this f1 to fm are nth power, and this fm is nth power, these are equivalent, okay? And the equivalent condition is the polynomial itself is an nth pseudo power. Okay. So in other words, we, we, we find exactly when do you have nth power stuff. So if m is big enough, then uh, you know this f has to be certain type. And if it's not pseudo power, then this is not possible to hold. Okay, so finally, I end my result in this logical consist. And because time is off, don't ask me questions. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, 
So um, after we finished uh, proving uh, the positive things, so Hector was uh, very happy and then he, he said, can we forget about our agreement? Can I add some logic? Uh, I said, okay, you are younger, you, you add it, but don't make me to, to learn it. <laughs> so, so this is the logical implication. So suppose P is big enough and you have some diagnosis, this Fermat type equation. So you have several of them. And this tell you, you, you cannot find an algorithm to determine if you have a solution in this FPT, in this polynomial ring of FP. So this is part is the implication in logic. So is this a typo? So the FQ should be FP, last, the last group? Oh, Q is power. Oh, sorry, yeah, confused. Yeah. OK. So, uh, sorry, you are welcome to ask a question. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but uh, as you see, this ABC theorem has many implications. It's very useful stuff. And, uh, and also, let's, you know, I, I, if I don't know logic, but let's not, to, not say no to logic. So recently, I learned logician that do a lot of number theory. And, some of them really know a lot, and so and now I respect them. <laughs> so that's not to say no to logic, but don't ask me logic. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of my talk. Thank you. <laughs>